And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the week of June 27, 2022. I'm Jason Parent with Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's edition of ACAP Today, we're going to talk about during this, the first week of summer, ACAP's heat pump program with two of our housing specialists here at ACAP. We're going to get to that conversation in a bit and how you can maybe connect with this program and get on the list to be a recipient of a heat pump here in Aroostook County in just a few moments. But before we do that, we're going to first turn as we do at each point in the broadcast to the news and information that you can use again for the week of June 27, 2022. And we start with this um, in this week's news and information you can use our Tax Palooza Day. Uh, this uh, week, this Wednesday, as a matter of fact, on June 29th from 9 to 3, we will be hosting at our 771 Main Street Presque Isle location, that's near Walmart in Presque Isle, a 2021 tax return palooza. This is to help individuals who have not filed taxes for the year 2021. Uh, to access the $850 relief check that the governor and state legislature have passed recently. Now, this is for individuals or couples who do not typically file tax returns, and we're only going to be working with you on filing the state tax return, which is what's required to get the $850 relief check. Um, you are eligible for one of those relief checks if you are a full-time Maine resident and do uh, file a 2021 income tax return. So that's why we're helping folks, as many folks on Social Security in particular, have not filed tax returns. Now, in addition to the $850 relief checks, many of the seniors and individuals that we're helping uh, to file their state taxes also receive an additional return. So it's certainly well worth your while. We are contacting individuals who have called us for appointments to invite them to come in at specific times on June 29th, but we're also hosting open hours and walk-in appointments, and we encourage you to come at that time as we'll have uh, over a dozen tax preparers sitting down ready to work with folks uh, across our agency, from across our agency that will be at our, again, 771 Main Street Presque Isle location. We also recently did an event in Fort Fairfield and in Ashland. Uh, those events were also very well received as well. So if you are in need of having your 2021 tax return completed to access the $850 relief payment, please either give us a call or come and see us between 9 and 3 on Wednesday, this Wednesday, June 29th. We also are very pleased that the ACAP Summer Scavenger Hunt is officially launched. It launched on the first day of summer, the 21st of June, and will continue for 50 days in honor of our 50th anniversary through the 10th of August. Now, it challenges you, uh, all uh, folks of all ages across the Rooster County, this is a great one for the kids to participate in as well, to complete 50 missions in those 50 days. So don't worry if you haven't signed up for it yet, you haven't missed anything because you can complete those 50 missions if you'd like to, maybe it's Maybe it's possible to do them all in one day, but to do those 50 missions in 50 days and to rack up points in the summer scavenger hunt. Now, the summer scavenger hunt will get you to do things uh, that really will truly uh, gain appreciation for being a resident of Aroostook County. It'll encourage you to attend a local summer festival in your community. It'll encourage you to get out and enjoy the outdoors. There's also some trivia questions about the county and about ACAP uh, as an agency as we celebrate our 50 years. Now, there are prizes uh, that will be drawn at the end of the scavenger hunt. The first prize, $300. Second prize is $200. And the third prize is $100. Now, this is all powered by a mobile phone app called Goose Chase. And you can get that on Google Play or your app store. You download the app onto your phone and then you sign in. You can play as a guest or register for a personal account with a username and password of your choice. Uh, search on under Goose Chase for the ACAP Summer Scavenger Hunt game. Um, and the game code is there on your screen, but it should be pretty easy to find from there. Uh, then you'll create your own player profile and you'll be able to see where you are in the leaderboard at any given time. It, it has an automatic leaderboard and you can see how you're scoring compared to others playing the Summer Goose Chase. Our prizes will be drawn from the winners or the individuals in certain scoring categories, each of the highest scoring categories. So we're really looking forward to seeing some of the community response it challenges you in some cases to take a picture of yourself doing something or, or to, like I said, to answer a trivia question or to have a good time doing something and to, to tell us about it. And we're looking forward to seeing some of the great pictures and great activity that will happen as a result of the summer scavenger hunt. Again, open to people of all ages and we encourage you to uh, download Goose Chase on your phone and play the ACAP summer scavenger hunt. The ACAP summer scavenger hunt is one of the things that we're connecting with our community about as we're out and about at community events uh, spanning across the county throughout this summer. These photos were taken 
looking at a recent caribou uh, caribou celebrations uh, Thursdays on Sweden, uh, where our members of our team were out talking about our services and programs that we're offering. They'll now also be encouraging folks to sign up for Goose Chase while they're out and about. So if you do see us, if you see our ACAP logo or an ACAP booth out and about at your favorite summer festival, please come over and say hello and learn about our more than 40 programs and services that we offer here at the agency. News from our WIC program, a couple of really exciting things as it relates to the summer bounty and summer farmers markets. There is a new uh, benefit on the e-farmers market nutrition program, it's called EFM, EFMNP, it's called. It starts officially uh, July 1st. Um, and as a result of that, participants who are 12 months old and up uh, with current benefits through the WIC program will receive $10 for locally grown fruits and vegetables where they can cash those in using their eWIC card at participating farmers markets. There's a list of farmers markets at maine.gov slash WIC where you can see uh, those that are included from this region. Uh, and it requires you to do a few other things to download um, the program and the like, but we're certainly encouraging folks to take advantage of this extra benefit for connecting with local farmers uh, throughout the summer months. And speaking of connecting with local farmers, the 2022 Aroostook County Action Program WIC Farmers Market kicks off on July 13th, uh, and there will be, gosh, an uh, eight, no, seven sessions throughout the summer on the 28th of July, the 4th of August, 17th of August, 29th of August, and the September 8th and 14th. Those will be held each day from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. just outside of ACAP 771 Main Street Presque Isle location, and we're encouraging folks, you don't have to be a WIC customer to enjoy uh, the farmer's market, but we are encouraging uh, certainly WIC customers or individuals who may be eligible for WIC in Aroostook County to connect with us, as this is another great benefit of that program, and we look forward to seeing you at our farmer's markets on those dates on your screen this summer. We also have been reminding you about uh, tips and tricks during the formula shortage, the baby formula shortage. This uh, tip and tri this tip comes to us uh, weekly from our WIC program. Uh, this week's tip asks, what should I do if I can't find infant formula? Well, one of the first things we're suggesting you that you do is contact your local WIC office in here in Aroostook County, that's ACAP. They can provide formula to participants, and we can also check to see if you might be eligible to be a participant. It's actually one of the more um, liberal uh, guidelines we have in terms of income guidelines. So many families, most families in Aroostook County with young children do qualify for the WIC program. Uh, we are also encouraging you and other, uh, other avenues to talk to your pediatrician. They may be able to help you find formula. Check some of the smaller stores. They may not be out of stock when some of the bigger stores are hit. And if you can buy formula online, please do so only from a well-recognized business, not from resellers or auctions. Again, if you would like to connect with our WIC program uh, in regards to formula or any other items, we would certainly welcome that. You can call us here at 764-3721. Our partners at the Hope and Justice Project are inviting all to participate in a community resource fair. That's this Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at their 5 Erskine Street location in Presque Isle, just at the top of State Street before you're heading out to Easton. Uh, they will be there from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. ACAP will be participating in this community resource fair along with another a number of other community uh, service organizations. We encourage you to visit again this Thursday, June 30th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Hope and Justice Project location um, at the very top of State Street in Presque Isle. We're also reminding you as a partnership with our friends at Pride Aroostook that there is a forum for adults and youth to come together to brainstorm ideas and put plans into action to support LGBTQ plus youth in Aroostook County. That will be held on July 18th uh, at Collins Pond Park in Caribou from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the evening. Uh, there's more information that can be found on Facebook and Instagram uh, through Pride Aroostook, and I'm sure we'll be posting information as well on the ACAP Facebook page, so be on the lookout for that as well. If you have any questions, you can email pridearoostook at gmail.com. We move on now to talk about a program that we haven't talked about in a, a couple of months, but the Affordable Connectivity Program of the Federal Communications Commission uh, continues to be available to households that can to ensure that they can afford the broadband they need for things like work, school, health care, and more. Now, the benefit provides a discount of up to $30 per, per month 
toward internet service for eligible households and up to $75 per month for households on qualifying tribal lands, of which we have two here in Aroostook County. Eligible households can also receive a one-time discount of up to $100 to purchase some of the hardware, be it a laptop, a desktop computer, or a tablet from participating providers if they contribute more than $10 and less than $50 toward the purchase price. Uh, the affordable connectivity program is limited to one monthly service discount and one device discount per household. For more information or to apply, uh, visit the Federal Communications website there uh, noted on your screen. We also are, this is the last call, the final call, because this is the final week for our potato bag, our five pound potato bag, specialty bag design contest. We're looking for any artist who would like to submit a design. You can go right to acap-me.org slash potato-bag-contest, or you can get a link right off of the ACAP website where you can read about the contest rules and upload your design right there using the website. Now, submissions will be accepted through this Friday at 5 p.m. So please do get yours in before then because we will be sending the submissions along to a judging panel. And of course, we will be unveiling the winner of our potato bag design contest uh, during the Maine Potato Blossom Festival Parade on the parade uh, reviewing stand on Saturday, July 16th, uh, just about 1 p.m. We'll be announcing who the winner is, a lucky artist whose artwork will be featured on this commemorative 50th anniversary ACAP potato uh, design bag. These bags uh, will be filled with potatoes from GB and D Pelletier Farms. They're Norland red potatoes that will be hand harvested by community members um, in mid-September um, in conjunction with the Scarecrow Festival in Fort Kent. That will be a really good time. Most of the bags will be distributed to food pantries and community cupboards across Aroostook County, but two of the bags, two of the special bags, will be taken by Maine's U.S. Senator and Aroostook County native Susan Collins to the White House, where they will be presented to the executive chef at the executive mansion. So uh, your design could make it to Washington, D.C. and all the way to the White House, so we encourage you to submit your designs and certainly uh, we'll be able to um, thank our partners, GB and D Pelletier Farms, and of course, Northeast Packaging, NEPCO, which is generously donating the production run uh, of these uh, five pound bags that we will be distributing the potatoes in. We move on now to some of our critical programs here in the county and encourage folks with the increased price of energy to consider applying for the Home Energy Assistance Program. We are at the tail end of the current season. So if you've already applied in this season um, and maybe hadn't been, um, uh, hadn't been within the income qualification guidelines, if anything has changed within your household, or if you haven't yet applied this season and are thinking, gosh, fuel is going to be really expensive uh, this fall, I might want to consider checking if I am eligible. We encourage you to do that. You can call us here at 768-3053 or email us at energy at acap-me.org. These income qualification guidelines are also accessible on our website. Now, for folks preparing for the next winter season, if you've already had your HEAP appointment with ACAP since August of last year, in the coming weeks, we will be sending out our new appointment calendars for this coming season. We're going to be starting a little bit earlier. We'll be starting in July with appointments this year. Um, so be on the lookout for your appointment for this season, especially if you're a senior citizen or a family with young children. Those appointments should be in July, August, September, and October. Uh, and the income qualification guidelines were also anticipating to be changed in this year to be a little bit more liberal and allow for folks with a little bit higher income to qualify for this program. So as soon as we have that information, we'll pass that along to you and encourage you to schedule an appointment for the coming season. But in the meantime, if you have not had an appointment or have had a change in your income since your appointment and when you did not qualify, please do give us a call in the next week or so uh, as this program for this season is coming to a rapid close. Another program that we've been alerting you about is the Maine Home Assistance Fund Program. This is for homeowners. Uh, it's a free federal relief program for those that have been financially impacted by COVID-19. For those of you familiar with the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, this is not that program. It's a bit more stringent or quite a bit more stringent. You must actually be behind on your mortgage and have actively been working with your financial institution to try to mitigate being behind on your payment. And if you are um, in basically a point where you're unable to really make any movement on that, then you likely qualify. It's also if you're behind on your property tax or utility payments and are at the risk of foreclosure. So it's basically if you're really quite frankly looking at the option of foreclosure at this point, and we want to help you avoid that. 
Uh, this can provide up to $25,000 per eligible household. It's funded through the uh, US Department of Treasury and is administered in, the, in Maine by the Maine Bureau of Consumer Credit Protection. ACAP is supporting individuals in completing their online application. Uh, you can call our team who's working on that at 764-3721 if you need help completing the online application, or you can go right online yourself at maine.gov slash home assist. Um, and complete the application yourself. ACAP will be working with uh, county residents who do apply for the program to ensure that their application is complete. We'll be calling you after the fact if there's anything missing there. And we'll also have our home ownership uh, support counselor will likely be working with households who do qualify for this program. So we will likely be in touch uh, if you are uh, accepted into the program. And also the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. This program is, uh, is quickly running out of uh, funds to support it, but we are currently still taking new applicants. The income eligibility guidelines have changed in recent weeks. Those income eligibility guidelines are listed there on your screen. If your household fall, uh, household size falls under or at those income eligibility guidelines, we encourage you and you are a renter to go to mainrentrelief.com to complete an application or to give us a call at 764 3721 where we will be able to help you complete that online application if you have difficulty doing so. We can also answer any questions you might have. And we also have been talking about this for the last few weeks, and that's our youth career counseling program. We have slots right now for individuals age 16 through 24 who are not currently attending school. That means if you're in between school, uh, between high school and college, now is a great time to enroll in this program. Uh, this, this program can help support you through your educational endeavors. It can also help connect you with local employers for direct training opportunities, and we can support those by helping to pay for transportation, helping to pay for childcare if that's a factor, or any uniforms or work clothes that you might need, as well as some of the soft skills around cover letter and resume building and money management skills that are also critically important. So please do reach out. Kathy Williams is our lead in this program. Her number is 554-4137, or you can email her at kwilliams at acap-me.org. We also want to remind folks out there that now is the best time of year to apply for our fall uh, new Head Start program year. We're very excited about a number of new partnerships that we have across the Roosted County with our Head Start and Early Head Start um, classrooms. Uh, we are launching new programs in Limestone. We will be the joint provider of pre-K Head Start services with the Limestone School Department in that school. In addition to that, we have a new partnership with RSU 39 that's allowing us to provide full day wraparound services that include childcare for the extended day at our Caribou Center uh, right there in Caribou. We have a three-year-old program we're launching in Van Buren at SAD 24 this fall. And lastly, a brand new program with SAD 27 up in Fort Kent where we will be providing two classrooms in our Early Care and Education Center in Fort Kent that will also have that wraparound full daycare option to go with it so that parents don't have to worry about transporting their preschoolers from a half day session into a private child care center. We can provide that service all on site for you. In addition to that, we have our traditional Head Start programs available in Caribou, Presque Isle and Holton, um, and also uh, in Dyer Brook, uh, as well as part of our partnership with RSU 50 and our partnerships with the Region uh, 2 School of Applied Technology in Holton and Presque Isle Regional Career and Technology Center at SAD1 in Presque Isle. So please do if you have a child under the age of five, because our Head Start program does run from working with a pregnant mothers all the way up to children age five and families with children age five. Please do give us a call about checking into Head Start enrollment and your income eligibility guidelines. Of course, we also have great programs in child care. Um, and services that support uh, children that are on the autism spectrum with uh, special services as well. So if you are finding yourself in need of any of those services, please give us a call. Uh, you can call our early care and education team directly at 554-4176, or you can apply directly online at acap-me.org. Look for early care and education programs and follow the link there. And now for our COVID corner of information, uh, very pleased to report that for the second week in a row, COVID levels in Aroostook County are in the green level, which means that uh, we are at the low transmission rate, um, which has, it had been several weeks that we were in the high transmission rate. So this is great news. 
Uh, now it's not only anyone age five and older, but children under the age of five are also eligible to receive a COVID-19 vaccine effective last week. Um, so we are encouraging folks to visit maine.gov slash COVID-19 slash vaccine. If you are in need of assistance registering your child or yourself for a vaccine appointment or a booster shot, uh, you can also call us here at 764-3721 uh, if you are having difficulty navigating things online and we can help find an appointment nearest you or a walk-in location nearest you. Um, everyone who is 12 years and older and has already received the COVID-19 vaccine may be eligible for a booster shot. And we remind you, do not let lack of transportation be an impediment to getting your child or yourself vaccinated or boosted. The Department of Health and Human Services is offering a free option for Maine people who need a ride uh, for a COVID-19 vaccination appointment. The number to call is there on your screen, but we are asking that you please do call 48 hours in advance to reserve a ride so they can make arrangements to get that transportation for you. And also we have uh, continue to remind you that there are free at-home COVID-19 tests available through the covidtest.gov website. Uh, this is the third time that they've opened up this option for folks. Um, so if you have on two previous occasions already registered, you do have a third option to go back on. They usually sit within seven to 12 days and there are three sets of four free at home tests available at this point. There's also the accesscovidtest.org site here in Maine where you can access five tests if you have not done so already. And we encourage folks to visit both of those websites and get their households uh, those, those free tests sent to them if they are in need. And we also are reminding you that if you are um, asked to quarantine or isolate because of COVID-19, that ACAP is the regional provider of COVID-19 community supports. That means that we can do grocery and meal delivery at no charge to your home or provide additional assistance for you to shelter or stay in place. We encourage you to reach out to us if you are in need of these services. You can call us directly at 764-3721, or you can go to the Maine Department of Health and Human Services website and register your household to receive these services. We typically get the services turned around within 24 hours. That's our goal, including on weekends. So don't be shy to complete this application online 24-7. And lastly, if we've not talked about something in this news and information that you can use and your family or household is in need of assistance, we encourage you to reach out to ACAP. We have a team of navigators who are well connected, not only with all of our 40 plus programs here at the agency, but with community services uh, in partnership with others across Aroostook County, other social service agencies. So we encourage you to reach out to us, 764-3721, if we can be of any assistance to you, especially at these challenging times. And that's this week's news and information that you can use, again, for this, the week of June 27th, 2022. I'm so pleased now to welcome to our program for our feature interview of the week, two of ACAP's housing specialists. First is Stan Nicholson. Stan, welcome to the program. Thank you, Jason. Good to be here. And both Stan is relatively new to the agency, but even newer to the agency is John Babin, who may be familiar, especially to our viewers up in the St. John Valley, whether you're watching on WOWL Channel 16 in Madawaska or WFKT TV Channel 4 in Fort Kent. And that's Mr. John Babin. John, I'm sure your Valley folks are very happy to see you on their screens as well. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, welcome to the both of you. I find it, you know, ironic that we're taking this the first full week of summer to sit down and talk about heat pumps, but actually they are kind of relevant because many folks also use them to cool in the summer. And though we haven't had the summer heat that we usually get, I'm sure it's coming, um, that uh, they become quite useful in the summer as well. So Stan, maybe let's start with you to talk about what is ACAP's heat pump program? Because um, folks may or may not know about it because it's it's relatively new. It's not like the Home Energy Assistance Program that's been around for decades. Yes, sir. The, uh, the heat pump program, it, it, exactly what it sounds like. We provide a heat pump through funding from Maine Housing, and it is at no cost to our clients, uh, provided they are in the qualification realm for that program. So John, talk about that, those qualification, the qualifications for that program. How do you know whether or not you qualify to be eligible to receive a free heat pump installed in your home? Well, first of all, you have to qualify through the heat system. And once you pass that threshold, then um, there are other qualifications that are uh, specific, but basically that's the biggest chasm right there. If, if, you can, if you can actually go through the heat program, 
you're probably eligible for a heat pump. Great. So, so Stan, if 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 you are saying, "Gosh, I am eligible for the Home Energy Assistance Program," and I would, I'm, I am interested in connecting with ACAP to uh, get on at least a list to receive a heat pump or be considered for a heat pump, talk about what happens next. What do you do? So we we have to pull the information. Uh, everybody goes on to a wait list. It, it is a little little bit of an extensive list right now. We're servicing. Uh, looks like the beginning of. 2021 uh, clients that have been on the list for that long. So about a year to a year and a half ish. It, it all depends on how many contractors we have available to, that can facilitate the needs for us. Um, they go on this list. Once they their name appears, we go through a, an additional qualification process where it's in-house. We determine what their poverty level and, and determinations of where the facility or, or where in the house the product can go. Um, and then we establish with the contractor uh, a time when they can visit the home and do an assessment and verify all of those things so that we can make sure it all goes according to plan. Now, John, there's a lot of uncertainty right now because of the high cost of, of fuel oil, but there's also the complementary seemingly high cost for many across Aroostook County, especially those um, that aren't in, you know, sort of more local like Van Buren, Light and Power, Holton Water, uh, that have higher electricity rates as well. What would you advise for a person who's considering, gosh, do I, do I contact ACAP about maybe getting into this heat pump program, or am I going to just transfer cost from my heating oil bill if I'm heating with fuel oil to my like electric bill by using the heat pump. Can you can you help talk folks through sort of what considerations they might need to make and, and why it might still be advantageous if it is to, to access well, the, the heat pump? The reality is that a heat pump is a supplement. And so with that in mind, you know, you, you never really go from one to the other. It's not black and white. It's almost like you have to really look at your cost and say, okay, well, is it worth me putting up my, uh, my furnace when I can just flip on a heat pump that uses, it may use more energy for the moment, but overall it may actually save you money because, because you're I not firing up your, uh, your furnace. I so non yeah, for intermittent times or when, weather's, uh, when the weather is not so uh, you know extreme, it's, it's an ideal uh, situation. Yeah, that is a good point, Stan. Um, it's it's really not for the coldest of the cold days that we have here in Aroostook County. Um, can you also sort of sort of share, Stan? You've been with us for long, a little longer than John. Have you heard from customers who have had heat pumps and heat pumps installed by ACAP, uh, who have who have had them over a winter season? What the difference made has been, and and what are some things to to look out for? Uh, I have heard. Uh... From a number of the clients that we've serviced in the past, uh, when we do order to do the evaluations after the after the contractors have gone and done the installation, uh, they most of the clients have reported very good outcomes with using that. Um, there's been a little bit of concern when the the electricity cost did rise, um, but we've assured them. And there was a study released by the Governor Mills House that the uh, the use of the uh, at, uh, heat pump through electricity is actually still more efficient than operating through an oil burner, say, or uh, other source. So it's it's still more efficient and thereby kind of wash as to how much uh, it, it costs per per different source of in, of uh, fuel. I guess it would be a better way to say it. Um, but everybody seems to be very pleased. Now, John, from your perspective, this program, um, the actual individuals who install it or the entity that installs these heat pumps are actually it a network of the providers in the community who actually do this professionally. It's very well done. Um, but talk about the, uh, the, the economic spinoff because we're actually in, you know, connecting with local businesses, small local businesses who are doing this work. What has been your connection and your communication and contact with those businesses who are actually doing the installation? Um, Jason, I'm sorry, there's was, was a noise here and I, I, didn't, I didn't catch all your questions. That's okay. Sorry. That's okay, John. I'll, I'll sort of re, re, repose the question yeah. to you. I was indicating that the, um, 
the heat pump program is one that I know that you and Stan go and do a lot of the preliminary work and then come back and do an assessment afterwards to ensure that everything is functioning optimally. But we engage a number of local contractors, a lot of small businesses who are providing this service across the Roost County to actually do the installation so folks can really feel comfortable that it's professionals that are installing them on a regular basis. What has been your engagement and interaction with those uh, local vendors and, 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 and what their thoughts are about the heat pump program? Because it's certainly helping to support the local economy as well. Oh, absolutely. The, the reality is, is that uh, the feedback I've got from, from uh, consumers is uh, they're more than happy to deal with all of our vendors. They're, they say oh, they're so helpful. They give, they give me advice on how to use it. And so that transcends to obviously good referrals for them. And the reality is, is that, you know, it's good customer service. So I think the whole process has been a positive one for all, all the consumers for, for the heat pump system here. Now, Stan, it's important yeah. to understand and for folks to understand out there that the heat pump is you know, not unlike your your furnace and not unlike other appliances and and and, and pieces of, of equipment in your home that it needs, it does need care after the fact. So the installation sort of, it isn't just, you know, do it and done. Uh, talk about what homeowners should be uh, considering as they're, they're, they're considering the potential of having a heat pump installed. So they, they are not a, a maintenance-free system. However, they are a very low maintenance system in that, Typically, the only thing that the homeowner would really need to maintain on this system, barring keeping the area clear from around where this unit is at, is just to keep the filters that are in the system uh, clear. They, they just need to monthly clean them. Typically, most of the devices that are being used right now have a little warning code that shows up once a month, once every other month or so. Uh, reminding them that they need to at least clean those filters out. And basically, that's about all that the homeowner would really need to worry about. Now, John, this is a significant um, investment in, in community members and in their home. I regularly sign off on the purchase orders for uh, these heat pump installations, and they can run anywhere from you know, $3,000 to $4,000, sometimes upwards of $5,000. Um, it's, so it, it is a significant, but it's it's of it's really if you qualify, it's of no charge, and then there's really the ongoing uh, savings to your your energy bill. Again, as you indicated, if you sort of pace yourself and use it correctly, because there are times of the year where it's just not really effective, and you need to rely on your primary heating source. Um, what do you? do with uh, customers to educate them, to help them understand the do's and don'ts of, of a heat pump? Well, basically what I kind of told you in the beginning that it's, it's a supplement. So I, I stress that every time because, uh, you know, it's not a save all. It's, uh, it, again, it's, it's a supplement for your system. So reality is, is that use it sparingly, use it uh, wisely and uh, let it do its job. And that's that's the hard part you know when you have a new car suddenly you have to go 60 miles an hour you, you know let the car do its job so it'll act efficiently it's the same thing with the heat pump stan um, from your perspective um when you go and do a site evaluation of an installation a heat pump installation in a home um it it, it just really can't just go anywhere in the home right what are you looking for when you when because the homeowner may have gosh i really want it here but there's there's obvious reasons, and I think you can certainly help walk them through that. So help walk us through what, what is an ideal location in a home for a heat pump. Sure. Uh, so typically, we make sure that the area surrounding <clears throat> where the unit is placed it has enough adequate clearance to allow for the airflow to come through. And then once it's into the system, it needs to be vacated through the home in a most uh, desirable path. Uh, putting it in front of a wall is just going to circulate it with inside of that room. So these are, we're trying to place them into a structure so that they can be most conducive to the entire home to the best of our abilities. So we're trying to make a clear path for the flow of air, allowing for circulation. We'll also educate the customers very frequently that if they just put a, a small oscill oscillating fan near a, an off room to that, that actually will move the air into that room as and making it more comfortable as well. 
be it summertime or wintertime. That's a great point, Stan. I guess, John, I want to have a quick conversation with you about that as it relates to we all, we, we, it's called a heat pump and we think about it as being a supplemental source for heating during the winter, but we're entering into some of the, the dog days of summer, the hotter days of summer here in Aroostook County. And we do get those days that, gosh, a little cool um, cooling of your home would be really nice. And, and these products that are being installed across Aroostook County through the ACAP heat pump program are also cooling units, are they not? The CR. I mean, by definition, it's it's mechanism basically just without getting specific. It just it it throws off heat somewhere, so you can reverse it, so it throws off heat to the outside. Uh, the other benefit is really is humidity, which is kind of a, a major concern, especially you know when, right now <laughs> it's raining. Right? So if you can keep your home dry and cool, or dry and warm, that's that's a better benefit for your home, for sure, and your health. Yes, indeed. What have we not talked about, gentlemen, that you want folks to know about this program, how they can access it, uh, what they, they should be considering as they're thinking about this? Stan, let me begin with you on that one. What have we not talked about that you want to make sure we get across to, to viewers and consumers out there? Sure. So in the past couple of months, we've had a little bit of concern or kickback maybe against from the, the clients when we do offer this system to them, how is this going to affect my electricity bill? Through, through my years, electricity goes up and down as far as how much it costs. So it may be at a high right now, but it's going to be coming back down eventually. My suggestion is you don't, just because it's in your home doesn't mean you have to use it. So if you are concerned about having a high cost of energy bill, agreed we would love to see everybody using them but if it is a concern that is a uh, port of, part of the maintenance system that the the client would be responsible for the energy costs using that but in in that regard i would still say go ahead and have this unit that you qualify for free it is a five thousand dollar basically gift that the state is allowing you to have i would put it in the home if it's too high of a cost don't use it but Stan, eventually you're going to come back to wanting to use that so and it's there for you and i and i do believe and i know that this is not necessarily in our wheelhouse but the the, the for customers of versant power there is a, an offset there is some kind of an offset do either of you are either both of you familiar with that yes yeah i'm familiar with that and in fact usually when i go to the client's home i'll, I'll give them a little statement that i have uh, cut out from the release of that uh partnership with versant that if you're Kilowatt hour usage is above, I think it, uh, I forget what the number is, but a, a threshold that they offer, they will give you a discount on your overall usage. Uh, I do believe that's only during the heating season, but I could be mistaken on that. Um, and I think that's about all on that one. John Babin, what else have we not covered that you want to make sure viewers and consumers understood from this broadcast? Well, I think people get confused with ACAP's uh, program and uh, versus uh, energy um, credit. Um, you know, they're totally different in every scope. Uh, this is a qualification. The other one is is a credit on your taxes. Um, I, you know, it's it's black and white to me. So that there's always that question I have. So, well, this is this through efficiency means? No, this is something totally different. <laughs> same same unit, but it's just acquisition is different. Yeah, so I guess that the bottom line would be, uh, we would encourage folks uh, not only to consider if you are a home energy assistance customer here at ACAP to consider applying through this program because there is no cost to you through this program. We're also encouraging folks who are not current home energy assistance customers, not only for this program, as I talked about earlier in the broadcast, uh, there are uh, there are eligibility guidelines for that program. We are anticipating they're going to be increasing this fall. And we know folks, even folks who, who don't qualify for the program, are really challenged. Everyday folks are challenged by uh, the cost of heating one's home these days. So we're really encouraging folks 
Uh, the uh, Home Energy Assistance Program is what I call a gateway program. It'll not only help you access this program, the heat pump program, but make you eligible to uh, potentially have a, an old heating system replaced through the Central Home Improvement Program. It also puts you on the list for the weatherization program here at ACAP, especially for vulnerable seniors and families with very young children who uh, get uh, sort of get more or less bumped up the list on that because of their vulnerability. So there's a lot of real benefits. I, I, I consider both HEAP and we talked about earlier, the Women, Infant and Children's Program, the WIC program is really critical foundational programs that we're encouraging county households to get engaged in. And the reality of the situation is knowing the demographics and seeing the uh, the census, the, la the latest census information, uh, my estimate is uh, conservatively that we have another 1,500 to 2,000 households in Aroostook County who are not currently enrolled in either of those programs, especially HEAP, who would be eligible. Um, and I, I'd say hundreds more who are not enrolled in WIC who would be eligible. So especially with the high cost of everything today, it would be really beneficial for families to sort of heed our advice and see about getting into both of those programs um, and, and, and the programs that flow from it. Um, all right, uh, Stan Nicholson and John Babin, anything else again that we have last minute advice for folks? Um, my only thing is just be aware that things are going to cost more money. <laughs> and and the number to call or the way to connect with us to uh, get in touch with either the HEAT program or to get in touch with, uh, if you are a member of the HEAT program or aren't currently enrolled in the HEAT program, to get it on the HEAT pump list. Stan, the way folks can do that. Or they can reach us at our uh, at the main office line at 764-3721. Just ask for ask to be transferred to either John or myself. Um, or you can reach me directly at 554-4156. John, what's your extension? Uh, 554-4151. Go. So just give us a call here at AGHAP if you're interested in learning more about the heat pump program or with our a heat customer and would like to be placed on the list. And if you're not a heat customer and get to Stan or John, they will help connect you with that program so that we can get that process started with you as well. And the next couple of weeks are a great time to do that as we're uh, ending one season and preparing to transition to another. Um, so before we leave the rest of you, again, thank you to Stan and John. Before we leave the rest of you today, just a quick reminder that if you are uh, interested in potentially joining the ACAP team, we have positions available across Aroostook County from our early care and education programs to um, our housing programs. We currently have a housing specialist position open here in Presque Isle to join Stan and John on their team, and I'm sure that they would love having a new team member join them to do their work. Um, so please do consider um, sending in your application. You can visit us at acap-me.org to learn about the current openings within our agency. And lastly, as we do at each point in the program, before we let you go, we give you our photo of the week. And throughout this 50th anniversary year, we're doing throwback photos of the week. So we throw it back way back this uh, week to 1976, where these students in our Holton Head Start program, including one very familiar face to us, that's Julie Duff, who's a member of our energy team right now. She's uh, an intake specialist uh, and a, pro uh, a program associate down in Holton, uh, where she was a Head Start student in 1976 as an employee, a long-serving employee of the agency now. She is actually the third one here in that back row, just in front of one of her teachers back then. That's young Julie Duff. Uh, we'll probably have to have her on ACAP today so you can see Julie Duff today at some point. But that's uh, our throwback snapshot of the week, taking it back to 1976 during America's bicentennial and uh, one of the uh, within the first decade of the Head Start program here in Aroostook County uh, as we are celebrating our 50th anniversary. So we thank Julie Duff and all of our team members across Aroostook County for their fantastic work every day to make the magic happen across Aroostook County and to support people and help make life better. With that, that's this week's edition of ACAP Today. Please don't forget to download Goose Chase on your phone and join us in the ACAP Summer Scavenger Hunt. And if you're a senior, we're hoping to see you and haven't filed your main state income tax, we're hoping to see you at Tax Day Palooza on this Wednesday, the 29th of June from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at our 771 Main Street Prescott location. Until next week, we'll be when we're back with another edition of ACAP Today. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you then. <laughs>